What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Celtics Talk Podcast here on the NBC Sports Boston Podcast Network. It's another emergency edition. Yes, the Celtics will not stop creating news, even on their off days when there's nothing else going on. Uh, signing today, Blake Griffin to a one-year veteran minimum deal. I'm a little bit conflicted about how I feel. I think the Celtics were in a position where they weren't in love with a lot that was out there on the free agent market. And it, it showed as they waited to get to this point, but now as the injuries continue to pile up, they've been, uh, they've been forced to move and make a decision here. So uh, to get the inside scoop, I had to dial up my buddy, Nick Ferdell, who, uh, you know, I, I keep bugging him because uh, the Celtics and Nets are forever intertwined. Had to get the scouting report on how Blake looked last year, whether he thinks he can actually help this team moving forward. So let's get right into it. Let's, uh, let's dial up Nick and, and see what he thinks about Blake. All right, Nick Fernell, ESPN, forever interlinked. Uh, we cannot, our two franchises cannot stop just merging at, at all corners. I had to call you today because Blake Griffin. Now, I, I, I won't share what, what I texted you earlier, but just give me the scouting report. You had to watch it all last year. What what, what is what has Blake got left in the tank? I haven't watched him last season, Mr. Forsberg. I don't think there's that much left, but Blake is a really proud guy. I know he, he keeps himself in in great shape. Maybe he can get uh, renewed energy by being around a team that needs him, but having watched him the second half of last season, I would be surprised as we sit here right now, if he's able to give the Celtics that much. And I've enjoyed dealing with Blake through the years. I, I had him during that time when I was bouncing around the Midwest in Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's a good personality when he wants to talk, especially to the media, but in general, from just a basketball standpoint, uh, I was at least a little surprised when his name popped up because I went, wow, I did not think there was that much left in his playing career. And I guess he's got a chance now to prove me and plenty of other people around the league wrong. Look no further than the award-winning 24 Auto Group with over 2,600 vehicles in stock, the brands you love, backed by the savings and service you can count on. Visit today or shop online at 24autogroup.com. We're kicking off fall with big savings at Stateline Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Lease a new Ram 1500 for $369 a month during Ram Power Days. Hurry in and you'll be saying, I got mine at Stateline. It is kind of crazy because he's only 33, which like when you consider that Al Horford's 36, like they're, they're, they're not basketball. He's not a basketball dinosaur, but his game was so predicated on explosion and athleticism. What is modern Blake bring to a TV team? What, what can I expect that he, if he does perform to his, his 33 year old capabilities, what will Blake Griffin do for this team? The thing that pops out as you say that is Blake was really good at trying to take charges defensively, trying to move around. But you and I sat there in that playoff series when he did get a couple minutes and it wasn't pretty. So, I mean, if we're trying to be optimistic here about what he can offer, he's a solid veteran presence in the locker room, especially with the way Brad Stevens likes to structure things. Mm -hmm. You know that is part of it. But on the floor, all I can remember, and I started, as you and I have discussed many times in the last year, I started <laughs> in Brooklyn at the beginning of January. Blake was getting wide open threes over uh. and over and over and he wasn't knocking them down again a new year new surroundings maybe that changes but there is nothing that pops out to me uh, that leads me to believe that that things in Brooklyn will be much different than they would be in Boston but in a limited role for a few minutes a game who knows well you're you're biased by this so this question is going to be uh leading a little bit but would they have been better off like the guys that were out there and I was thinking of Carmelo and your, your Syracuse uh, uh, bias. Would, was there any other big men out there? Like, I mean, I know, and it's weird to call like Carmelo and Blake big men, but in the Celtic system, they will be probably the third biggest guy on the team behind Luke Fournette and, and Jason Tatum. So like, was, would you have gone the boogie route? Would you have gone uh, Carmelo or was Blake just the best that's out there or the, the best finger crossed that uh, among the veterans? I throw another name in there Ooh. just for argument's sake, LaMarcus Aldridge. I, yeah, I don't yeah. think he has much left either, but in the framework of our conversation, would he have fit? I, 
I don't know. I, 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 this just feels like a coin flip. I, I still think that Cousins could give a team something offensively, mm-hmm. but there are always going to be questions as to exactly how he would fit into a locker room. In that regard, Chris, Blake's going to fit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think it's funny you bring up LaMarcus because LaMarcus was recruited to San Antonio in part by Ime Adoka, who mm-hmm. obviously is not with the program anymore. Maybe that was uh, one of the plans and that had to be a little bit uh, blown up. Uh, I do agree with you. I think the one thing Blake has going in his favor is to, in order to get the league to pay this contract, the Celtics have to bring him in and he has to be here the whole year. And yeah. maybe just the fact that he's going to be a better locker room guy than, you know, you just never know with DeMarcus, it could go volatile. And, you know, we don't know what Carmelo has left just this many years under his belt. And I think part of it, and this is crucial as uh, Celtics fans get adjusted to what Blake Griffin may provide. Chris, so many times fans, basketball fans, fall in love with a name. And Blake yeah. Griffin used to be the guy that jumped out of the gym and was athletic as hell and could move all over the floor. He's not that guy anymore. So if the expectations are, hey, this is a guy who might be able to help us at the end of the bench, cool. But if you're thinking any more than that, and, and he's going to go hop over a Kia again, you know, <laughs> going to the rim, good luck to you. What if he hopped over like a scooter or something? Like, can we, can we find a smaller object for him to, to dunk over? Like temper expectations. What if he just dunked over Lucky the, the Leprechaun? Are we, are we, can he still do that? I was looking oh. at really 13 dunks all of last year. And that, that's my concern is that it's not. And, and, and just like you said, it, it's so funny. If you told me, think about like six years ago when Jalen Brown was in trade rumors because uh, everyone wanted like a Blake type or a Jimmy Butler type. Imagine if I had said, the Celtics are going to sign Blake Griffin and we're all going to be like, eh, yeah. I don't know. It's like, it's so weird. But like the, the NBA comes at you fast. And when you are a player who had the meteoric rise that Blake did yeah. and had the career that he had, it can be tougher to accept. But again, this is where I think uh, this fits for where the Celtics are at right now. By all accounts, people like dealing with him. I think he got kind of tired of sitting at the end of the bench last year because he mm-hmm. felt like he had more to give. But if you can fit in and you know the role that you have on a team that really believes that it can still win a title this year, then usually you can go a long way in the league. But just a, a word of warning. I, I would like to see a, a, a jumping contest uh, as we're thinking about it between Blake and Scal at this point. I, oh. I'd be curious. Oh, my goodness. Who can, who can get up uh, to where they need to go? You never want to be uh, – trying to be, be compared to Scal's athleticism because uh, I know it, it, it's, uh, it's, it was limited in his playing days, but uh, and far be it for me to judge. Uh, I would just keep swinging my golf clubs and, and, and make it that right. high. Kick off ball with game-winning deals at Route 9 Nissan. Lease a new Rogue Sport for $289 a month. That's right, just $289 a month. Score your game-winning deal now and visit today or online anytime at Route9NissanAuto.com. We're kicking off fall with big savings at Stateline Subaru. Like a new Subaru Crosstrek. Drive home for just $2.99 a month. That's right, only $2.99. Score big savings today. Stateline Subaru, a driver's best friend. Let's get you out of here on this. One, I want to apologize for making fun of all the calamity around the Brooklyn Nets. Boy, did that come back and bite me in the butt with the Celtics last few weeks of the offseason. But, two, I just want your, like, just give me the, uh, the outsider's view of it. And obviously you cover a rival, a rival that's, you know, has the chance to, to be right there in the mix. But what do you think the rest of the league is thinking, looking at the Celtics and, and everything that's gone on here the last few weeks? Let's mm. take a, a deep breath uh, on this one, because you and I have covered the league long enough at this point to know that in order for any title team or, or team that wants to be a title team to get to that level, there has to be, camaraderie there has to be continuity there has to be that buy-in from everyone and usually those are are cool buzzwords but you can see the difference when a team has it and when they don't have it and I say this as somebody that thought the Celtics were going to win the title when when we were talking in April and and we saw them dominate 
the Nets and do what they did in that series and keep working the way up. Uh, you and I both agree. If the Celtics take care of the ball against the Warriors, they do they do win the title. They're the champs. And they didn't they didn't and take they care didn't of the ball. do it. <laughs> so to think that they're going to somehow go all the way back down or they're not going to be what we thought, I think that is tough. But when you start trying to build a program a certain way and everybody seemingly loved Ime dating back to, you know, a month ago yeah. before we heard about all this stuff to change coaches and to change the framework within that system. When you don't have the leader there, that is incredibly difficult, no matter how much talent you have. So it's not to say that the Celtics can't do it and Missoula can't be the guy, but that is what I have the most questions about uh, is that, after the, the last few weeks that that organization has had to then come back and go, all right, well, let's put it all together and make it work throughout the season. That seems to be really tough, especially when you've got a Milwaukee in place that if they were healthy, we could have that conversation yep. all day. Would they have beaten the Celtics to begin with? So you never know what happens over the course of a season, but that is an incredibly tough blow from a chemistry standpoint for a team on the floor to see all the things that have happened now. Yep, and it's just going to make the movie about the, the Celtics this year that much more uh, Hollywood-esque when they, they find a way to, to navigate through. I, like I, I would say, I was, I was pretty down in the dumps last week and trying to figure out how this was going to work. Uh, after a couple of training camp practices, uh, I'm a little bit more bullish. I'm eager to see like when the real games roll around and if talent takes over and if Jalen and Jason can kind of carry this thing and Marcus Smart. But yeah, as you said, it's uh, a little bit of that continuity. They took on Ime's personality last year and mm -hmm. I wonder no if question. they can main. Yeah. So uh, I'm fascinated to see how it goes. Well, uh, we'll end on this. I think, I think here's how it has to end. Uh, Blake Griffin somehow comes off the bench in game seven against the Nets in the Eastern Conference Finals and wills the Celtics to the to the NBA Finals and then vanquishes the Los Angeles Clippers. His, and so just like a, a Blake Griffin revenge tour. And we can look back in this podcast and say, we didn't think he was going to give him much. And, and then he can he can come rub it in our face and say he, he figured everything out. Well, I look forward to that because I'm sure that Blake, knowing the people uh, who are wondering, like myself, how much left that he's mm -hmm. got in the tank is going to get up to the podium and then just let it fly because <laughs> when he wants to be, he's still a hell of an interview. I, I didn't see that side of him as much uh, in these last few months in Brooklyn, but uh, he, he's got a, a good personality and, and he's going to fit. But how much he offers on the floor, that uh, remains to be seen. We will see. And uh, we will be seeing a whole bunch of you. Uh, as always, Nick, thank you for your time. You got it, boy. All right, good stuff from Nick. I, I keep saying it, uh, whether it's Kyrie, the KD rumors, playoff series, uh, the Celtics and Nets can never be too far apart from each other. And uh, and that's just the way it's always going to be. So uh, we'll see if, if Nick's right. It doesn't sound very bullish on what Blake can give the Celtics, but I do wonder if uh, in a limited role, and here's the way I look at it is the, the Celtics don't need Blake Griffin to be I don't even know if they need him to be what he was two years ago in Brooklyn and playing 25 minutes in the playoffs. They need him to eat some minutes here at the start of the year. They need him to be a big body who can uh, spell Al Horford and Luke Cornett when he's healthy again. Can he uh, take some minutes as Robert Williams is working his way back? So uh, not a lot on his plate. The one thing I will say is that in order to get the, the complete savings on this deal, the NBA will play for NBA pays a portion of any player's contract uh, veterans and the Celtics won't be on the hook for a lot of money. They do have to pay the, pay the tax on it, but in order to get the savings uh, you need to keep them on the roster for the full year. So unless Blake Griffin is traded down the road, this is, this is a one year deal. Like he's going to be here for the duration bites into your flexibility with the roster structure a little bit. Uh, but if Blake is a good teammate, I do think uh, it's an okay move to make an okay uh uh way to carry an extra body the other thing here is it was going to cost them the same thing no matter what that 14th or 15th player might be and i'm actually intrigued to see what happens here do they still keep two guys of this training camp group and carry them into the regular season have a 15 man full roster or do they stay stick with 14 give themselves a little bit more flexibility down the road every dollar does matter at this point uh the celtics are almost 20 million dollars over the luxury tax line they're paying essentially 350 or 375 on every dollar uh they spend so uh it adds up quickly even on a minimum contract 
I do think this is maybe a reflection that the Celtics aren't enthralled with what they've seen from this group of, of uh, you know, kind of uh, veteran washed out of the NBA types uh, like the Noah Vonleys and, um, you know, maybe we'll find out more in these preseason games and see who uh, first year coach Joe Mazzola is willing to lean on. But, uh, you know, if, if the early days of camp and maybe it's just a more the bigger factor here is Luke Cornett is going to miss some time with the with the sprained ankle. Uh, and you couple that with no Gallinari, no Rob for the first eight to 12 weeks, and maybe just added up to a point where the Celtics felt like they just needed a little bit more insurance, uh, especially at that big man position. Uh, I'm eager to hear what the coaching staff has to say about what the, maybe the front office saw um, in, in scouting him and, and workouts in LA and, and all that. So uh, some, some, some never a dull day around the Boston Celtics for the past, uh, past week, past month, maybe even the year. So, uh, I need everybody to go like, subscribe, check us out on the YouTube page. The, the podcast keep coming. We'll actually have our first our first Celtics talk post game pod coming on Sunday when the Celtics and Hornets meet uh, to open the preseason, and uh, and then it's just going to be steamrolling from there. Three, four preseason games and right into the to, to the real stuff. So, uh, like I said, everybody, make sure you're you're sticking around for for all that. We'll catch you next time on the Celtics Talk podcast.